The Book of the Duchess by Geoffrey Chaucer. The Book of the Duchess is the first major work of the English poet Geoffrey Chaucer. It was composed in 1370 in honor of Blanche, Duchess of Lancaster, wife of John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, and Chaucer's best friend. Blanche died in 1368, probably from the plague at the age of 26 and John of Gaunt mourned her for the rest of his life, even though he would remarry. The Book of the Duchess is thought to have been compassed on the second anniversary of her death. It may have been commissioned by John of Gaunt and was read at Blanche's memorial service on the two-year anniversary of her death. The Book of the Duchess is a remarkable example of the high medieval dream vision a literary genre popular during the Middle Ages. Compassed in Middle English, the poem follows a familiar structure wherein the narrator initially shares a personal predicament or struggle. Subsequently, the narrator falls asleep and experiences a dream that offers insight or presents a solution to the problem. As the dream concludes, the narrator typically awakens, feeling a sense of tranquility or acceptance. The entire poem should be understood as having been written after the narrator woke from the dream, and so his problem of unrequited love which he describes as a sickness he has suffered from for eight years and continues even after the dream. The poem opens with the narrator complaining that he cannot sleep and lives in a kind of apathy, where he feels neither joy nor sorrow, does not care about anything, and fears he may die because of his lack of sleep. The narrator says how he does not really know why he is experiencing this, but can guess, and how there is only one physician who can heal him, but will not do so. The poem relies on an audience's acquaintance with the romantic vision of courtly love, a poetic genre of medieval literature developed in southern France in the 12th century c, which frequently featured a knight hopelessly in love and devoted to a lady. The lady in these poems is often depicted as a physician who can heal the knight either emotionally, spiritually, or physically, and so the physician the narrator refers to in line 39 is a lady he loves who has either left him or will not return his love since he cannot sleep. The narrator reads a book, Ovid's Metamorphosis, containing the story of the lovers Says and Alcyon. Says goes on a sea voyage and, when he fails to return on the given day, Alcyon begins to worry. She prays to the goddess Juno for a sign of whether Says still lives, and her prayer is answered in the form of Morpheus, god of sleep, appearing as Says to tell her he is dead. Alcyon dies of grief three days later. The narrator then marvels at the story and how Alcyon received an answer to her prayer when he has not, and so he prays to Juno, almost instantly falls asleep, and begins to dream. He finds himself in bed on a May morning with birds singing, and quickly gets dressed to join a hunt in progress outside. He is separated from the others in the party, and walks alone through the woods, until he comes upon a man in black sitting alone. The man, described as a handsome and noble knight, is writing a poem and completely unaware of the narrator. The poem is a lament for lost love, which the knight recites as he writes, in which he says how the love of his life has died, and he will never feel joy again. The narrator is moved by the poem, and even more so by the knight's obvious sorrow, and moves to comfort him. But the knight is so deep in despair he does not notice at first. The narrator apologizes for disturbing the knight, says how he is obviously depressed, and asks what he can do to help. The knight answers that there is nothing anyone can do, and then relates how miserable his life has become how he curses fortune which has stripped him of happiness, and how life is meaningless now, whereas once it was bright and joyful. The narrator then tries to console him by reminding him of the wisdom of Socrates in confronting fate, and how famous lovers have suffered throughout history like Medea with Jason, 
Dido with Aeneas, Samson with Delilah, the knight tells him he does not know what he is talking about, because the knight has lost far more than any of the people cited, and tells him to sit down, and he will make the problem clearer. The knight then tells the narrator of how he met this beautiful woman, fell in love, and married her. The narrator interrupts to say how his wife sounds very nice, but she could not have been as perfect as the knight is depicting her. The knight replies how everyone saw her in the same way, and there was never anyone as beautiful or kind or gentle as she. The narrator still does not grasp the knight's problem and asks him to tell of their first words with each other, and how she came to know he loved her, and then asks plainly what has gone wrong with the relationship. The knight obliges and tells the narrator of the first song he compassed for her, and then talks about their relationship, and how much she meant to him. The narrator asks, where is she now? And the knight replies, she is dead, and instantly hears the hunting party returning. He then wakes from the dream to find himself in his bed with the Book of Says and Alcyon in front of him, marvels at the dream he had, and says how he knew he had to write it down immediately. The poem ends with the narrator saying how he has done so and now his dream has done.